welcome back to part 9 of Amazing Mazes. In this part we're going to be looking at building the levels for our Bear in the Maze game and we're also going to talk about game design. Okay, well we're going to make some levels for our game now but first of all we need to make some more objects. So we're going to start off just by making some new sprites. Let's duplicate our purple wall and we're going to go into Edit Sprite, Images, Colorize and then we're going to move this one down to a nice red colour like that and then we're just going to name it SPR underscore red wall and it should already be modified because we've duplicated this sprite okay next we need to create an object so let's name this one obg underscore red underscore wall and we'll give it the correct sprite we're going to make it solid and we're going to make its parent the grey wall, that obji wall object which we had earlier and that's all you need to do to make more walls for your game and again you can make them in any colour now we're going to make some more ghosts so let's duplicate the sprite of the blue ghost we're going to do the same thing, edit sprite images, colorize and then we're just going to move the slider bar, this time we're going to make a pink one there we are and we'll rename this one SPR underscore pink underscore ghost and again it should already be modified because it's duplicated now to turn it into an object we just need to duplicate our obg green ghost like this let's change the sprite so we've got the sprite of the pink ghost we'll rename it so it says obg underscore pink underscore ghost like that and then the only other thing we need to do is just change this bit in our alarm event because um, when he stops being scared he turns back to green well if this is a pink ghost we want him to turn back to pink so let's open that up and select pink and then uh, that should be fine so that's how to make more ghosts so I'm going to go and make some more different objects but first of all there's something else I want to show you okay here's a, a quick clip of part of the game which I made earlier but I don't really like it one of the problems here as you can see one of the ghosts is blue now he's blue when he's normal, but of course if you touch a crystal he becomes blue as well. And that's not really fair on the player. They could easily get confused and not be able to tell the difference as to when they can catch him and when, it, when they can't. So as a des that's a bit of a design fault. What I'm going to do in the future is make sure I don't make any ghosts that are blue when they're not scared. And this is another level I wasn't very pleased of. If you have a look in here you can see I've made the walls yellow. Now the only problem with that is it makes it quite hard for the player to actually see where the bear is. Of course that's their object. So again, I think that's probably a bit of a design fault there. So I'm going to avoid having yellow walls just to make it easier for the player to play it. It's not going to reduce the challenge, but it is going to improve the gameplay. Well, thinking about those little um, design problems we've had, here you can see I've come back and I've actually made some more wall sprites, but I haven't made any yellow ones. And I've made some more ghost sprites as well, but haven't got any blue ones. We've only got one blue one for the scared ghost. And then we've just turned all these into objects. So they're all ready here for us to start building our levels. And that's what we're going to do in a minute. But first of all, I want to talk a little bit about game design. Now if I just find my picture that I've got here, that I've been creating, here we go. This is what we want to think about when we're doing um, game design. As you can see on my little diagram here, um, you've got kind of this bottom bit where it's very, very easy. And then gradually as your game goes on, your game should slowly, slowly start becoming more and more difficult. So it, what you've got is an actual slope and um, as you can see as you keep progressing through the levels you're going to introduce more and more challenges you, you when you get to levels two or three they should be a little bit more difficult from when you've your level one when you get up to levels four and five they should be a little bit more challenging again 
right the way up to the top, which is your very, very hardest level. But sometimes when games are designed, they're not always made like this. Now if I just show you some of the problems which happen when then they haven't got the des this kind of design. Now this is one thing that you quite often find in games, which is a real problem. And that's when the difficulty suddenly spikes at the beginning or when the first level is really hard. And the trouble with that is it actually creates like a barrier in the game. And if the player finds it just too difficult, they will actually give up playing. So we really don't want anything that kind of works like that. We don't want it to be really, really hard at the start of our game. This is a second problem that happens in some games, and that's when the difficulty spikes in the middle of the game. So you're progressing really well, and then suddenly it gets really, really hard. And this isn't a good design either. Again, it can act like a kind of barrier, and the player never gets to play any of the other levels. The other problem is, of course, if they get past your difficult area, the next levels are a lot easier. The player actually finds them quite boring. So having a difficulty spike there is a really bad idea in level design as well. So let's get rid of that. So what we really want to do is it f for the difficulty to increase gradually so that you don't actually get to your hardest levels until you get right to the end of the game here. So what you want to do down here, yep, so it's gradually getting it harder and harder, sorry. <laughs> what you want to do down here is make your first level really easy. So easy, really, that anybody could play it. And then it becomes like a door which opens up and helps your player get into the rest of your game. It gives them a chance to practice their skills. And then when you get to levels that are in the middle of the game, you can just make them just a little bit harder to introduce some challenge and to keep it interesting. I mean, if it's all the same, it's going to be quite boring to play. So we just introduced challenges gradually so it slowly gets more difficult and then we save the really really hard levels for the end and that's a really good design for any kind of game that you want to build and we're going to use this exactly this idea for making our bear in the maze game Right, so we're ready to actually have a go at starting to build our first level. So our very first room, we're going to uh, make it super easy. So you can see I've just put the wall, the outside wall on here. This is for our level one. And I've also built this funny little thing in here. And I'm going to put a ghost, just one ghost, inside here, because this is our first level. And because I've made it kind of enclosed, it's going to make it just a bit harder for the ghost to get out. And it's going to give the player just a little bit longer just to get used to how they move their bear and how to collect the coins before they have to worry about their ghost. So I've just put that in like that. And we're going to talk more about how the enclosures work and how they change the difficulty of the game as we go. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure I've put a bear in. Make sure you've put bear and not still bear. Then I'm going to take eight of these wall objects out at the top here and I'm going to add my invisible wall sprite so we can display the score at the top there. And then all we need to do is add a um, obji room controller object in the corner. So that's that part done. Right. The next thing we need to do is uh, actually think about what we're going to put how we're going to make the maze. So let's start putting a few walls in here. What you want to do is create plenty of areas that act like corridors and then the ghosts are able to run around the corridors and so is the bear. Um, with this bit I'm just going to remove these two walls so we've got a nice gap down here so they can kind of turn around and change direction. And we'll just put some different gaps around. Again, um, I'm not going to make these walls particularly hard, I'm just going to add some different things. The next thing we're going to put in is I'm going to put in four hearts because this is level one and um, we're going to make it as easy as possible. We're going to give the player as many chances as possible while they're just learning how to play the game. So I'm going to put some more walls in on this side. Um, it's up to you how you want to do your different walls. Um, in the rest of this tutorial you'll see some different designs I've put in for different levels to give you some ideas and you can pause the video and have a, a better look at those and see how I've built them. There we are. 
and we've got some more hearts so I'm just going to put one more heart in and then in every single level I always add four crystals so that's just like a rule that I've made up for this particular game I mean you could add more crystals or less crystals but for this one I've decided to put four crystals in every room so we'll just put some more walls in now and for this level I'm also going to introduce a little bonus item um, we're just going to add some cherries in a minute <laughs> yep no we're putting more walls in my apologies it looks like I'm adding the bits at the bottom and the bits at the top but we, yes we are going to put some cherries in in just a second and the reason for that is that I want to get the player used, from the, used to the idea from the beginning that food in this game means extra points so we're just going to introduce that idea by just putting some cherries in here they are <laughs> so we just add a few of those into my room and then the only other thing we need to put in here of course is the coins what we do is we fill every single empty space now up with those so we don't just have a few coins when the game's working proper you have coins in every single empty space that's there so add some of those I'm just going to go and change the background to black and it'll show up even better and if I go back onto objects tab I can just finish putting the coins in and then we'll have a look at some of the different levels I've built okay well I'm back and here's level one has been finished now you can see I've finished adding everything I've got my ghost one ghost inside the enclosure I've got my four crystals I've got four hearts in here so the player can build up a nice lot of lives when they're starting out and they're just learning this um, we've also got some cherries in here as well so we've introduced that, we've introduced the idea of the collecting the coins and we've also got the ghost inside an enclosure so it will just take a little bit longer for the ghost to get out so the player can just get used to how the game works so that's our level one looking quite good there and then I'm just going to show you some other levels which we've made so let's look at my next level You see we've used the orange wall in here this time we've only got three hearts and we've got two ghosts so we've just increased the difficulty but just a little tiny bit and you can see here the enclosure has opened out slightly again it still takes them a while to be able to reach the area where the bear is but it just gives the player again that's just those few seconds to actually uh, get used to where they are and I've introduced cherries we've got our four crystals so that's my second room let's have a look at my third room now in here we've introduced a new feature we've introduced the chocolate now I didn't put the chocolate in the first level because if all the levels are exactly the same it's going to make quite a boring game see this time I've only got two hearts slightly more difficult two ghosts but um, what we want to do is slowly introduce new features so there's always something new and exciting for the player to find in each level this is level 4 which is kind of the middle of the game and in here I've just made this look quite kind of flashy and that's kind of to give the player a bit of an idea well done you've reached midway point <coughs> you've come all this way so it's kind of like a bit of a bit of a bonus reward really and in here we've got the chocolate again we've got three ghosts two hearts so a little bit more tricky um, what we've done is we I've also introduced the burger in here if you go into your obji room controller and click on the create event all I've done is I've put this new piece in here here's our alarma zero event which creates the burger but I only want the burger to appear in the later levels so what I've done is I've introduced this I've put in a test variable up here and I've done this for each of the rooms that I want the burger to be to appear in so it's the last levels of the game basically so all you do is you open up a test variable and I'll just open this up to show you the variable we put in is room the value and you just put the name of the room you want the burger to appear in so here I want it to appear in room 6 so just type in the name of the room you want it in that's quite easy to do so it has to be equal to it and just to add a start block 
alarm zero set to 300, end block. And that's all you have to do. To um, And you just do that for every single room that you actually want the burger to appear in. So again, that's another surprise which the player doesn't know about from the beginning. It's just something that suddenly appears halfway through the game. A nice little extra feature. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the later rooms <coughs> I've designed. Here's one that's a little bit more difficult. Just pull that down a bit. And in this room you can probably see that I haven't added any hearts, which would make it super difficult. So I'm just going to go and put these in. That was a bit of a mistake, wasn't it? Let's just put two hearts in here. See, we've got three ghosts. If you look at the bit where the ghosts are, you can see it's quite opened out. We've also got these funny gaps at each end of the room. And this is also a new feature. When the bear goes through the gap, he's going to peer on the opposite side. So to do this, all you need to do is take out a wall on each side. It has to be on the same line. Then we're going to open up the ghost and we're going to add a new event. So go into Add Event, Other, Outside Room Event. And you just click on this and it will add it up here. And then all you have to do is go onto your Move tab and find the action that's called Wrap Screen. And if you pull it over, all you need to do is make sure it's set to directions in both directions so it wraps the screen in both directions we do that for the ghost we also want to do it for the bear and then the player can do the same with their bear so again we add an event other outside room and it appears here and then we just pull over this action on the move tab called wrap screen and we set it to wrap screen in both directions and that's all you need to do and then back in your room you just need to remove a wall. They have to be on the same line, so make sure you've got a wall that's the, the same line as that end. And then if a ghost or a bear runs out through the gap, they'll appear on the opposite side. So that's a nice new feature that we're going to add in. In this room, you see I've done the same, and I've taken out a little gap at the top and the bottom, like that. So that means that um, they can use that, those gaps. And it's actually quite a fun thing to introduce in this game got four ghosts so it's become even harder only two lives to collect still got our four crystals we've also got our burger and our chocolate so let's have a look at our final level now you can see I've made it quite quite nice here we've lo used lots of different colors because we want to make it special because it's the final level you can see I've got four ghosts again but only one heart we've added two pieces of chocolate just so the player can get some really big score points as they're running around still got our four crystals still got lots of coins and cherries and we've got four gaps in this room so there's four different places you can disappear out one side and reappear in another and of course we've also got our burger appearing so that should make a really good final level so all we need to do is now is just uh, give it a test and you can actually see how this works in practice. <laughs> right, so here's our first level, our super easy level. You can see we see how the ghost is just really trapped in that room to start with. I mean, he's not entirely a tra trapped. Eventually, his programming will enable him to find the way out. But it just enables the player to get used to what it's like to collect things, to discover what different things do to learn that the hearts, for example, give him extra lives. And uh, that's very important for a first level. We're making it easy. We're opening the game up and enabling the player to just get used to it, enjoy it, and learn how it works. And um, when you're the most important thing with it, once you've created your levels, is that you test them. See, so, yeah, my ghost has actually got out from his enclosure now, so he's now running around the maze. And, of course, you remember that we put in those key presses with N and P, so you can jump between levels, so you don't have to play every single level in order to test it, although I would recommend you do that at some point. Here we are on our hardest level, and you can see I'm just having a quick test of this now, so don't forget to use N and P to help you move between levels and test them. You can see how we disappeared out of one corner and reappeared in the other, so that's how the how the little um, wrap screen thing works and it looks really good. So hopefully that should make a 
quite a fun set of levels now to play. Next time on Amazing Mazes, we add the finishing touches to our Bear in the Maze game. See you there.